Hi folks, I'm here with the guinea pig again because I'm going to put it in the state where it's ready to go in the hutch, which doesn't take very long <laughs> to get it in that state. So it's almost 25 past two in the afternoon. So it's supposed to be 10 hours later that the next baby guinea pig is released. It doesn't take very long, just a few minutes. So it's 25 past two in the afternoon. So the next guinea pig should be released at 20 past 12. I'm not sure if I'm still going to be up tonight at 20 past 12. But if I am, I'll be able to see if it is released exactly 10 hours later. It's interesting that they've made it 10 hours because I suppose if a child's playing with this, it's probably going to be sort of early afternoon by the time they've had enough of playing with it and they put it in the hutch for it to um, have its second baby guinea pig. So I think kids are pretty much guaranteed to be in bed by then and it's pretty much guaranteed for the second one to arrive when kids are asleep. So after the second one's been released, I'll put the guinea pig straight in the state again and put it back in uh, so we can get that last one released 10 hours later. And then I'll show you folks how you reload the top of the hutch so that you can repeat the same experience and with Paul's help we'll also explain exactly how this works because it's really quite clever. It's almost 25 past 12 and I am still up. If it is timed accurately it should release the next baby guinea pig any minute now it's 25 past now so it looks like this baby guinea pig is running slightly late only slightly late i would say it was sort of 10 hours and a minute maybe so there it is in the corner, landed on its side this time with its package. Okay, so I've immediately put it back into its uh, mode again and uh, put it back in a hutch. So the final one will be released at approximately... 10.30 tomorrow morning and after that I'll have a look at the instructions and we'll reload the top of the hutch and explain how this all works. So it's just past half past ten now so I expect that the last guinea pig is going to be released any second now. And there it is. So there's the last one with the present. It's landed on its side again. Okay, so let's have a look at the instructions for reloading the hutch playset. You can play the creation process again by reloading the babies into the hutch playset. Open the cover lock access door. So the cover lock access door is on the top of the hutch here. 
Okay, so we've got that open. Turn the dial 90 degrees clockwise to unlock. And it's actually got a little caption on the dial itself showing one arrow and a padlock locked and the other arrow and a padlock open. So that's quite clear. So we turn it 90 degrees clockwise. There's 90. It stops anyway when you've gone 90 degrees. Three, lift the cover up. Okay, so you lift the cover up like that. Four, Place the baby guinea pigs in as shown. Note, please carefully follow the diagram for placement of baby guinea pigs. Baby guinea pigs should be placed with their feet facing downwards. Gifts should be placed in front of the baby guinea pigs in each chamber. So I've placed them as accurately as I can according to the diagram. I think that will be the first one that will be released and then that will be the second one and this will be the third. So I've placed the same guinea pigs and presents as they came out. So presumably we just close this now And I guess we have to lock it. So we'll move that back to the lock position. So I'm going to change this to fast. So that they will be delivered half an hour after each other this time. But before we test out whether I've reloaded that correctly and it works okay a second time. We're going to talk about how this actually works because it's really clever. So the mama guinea pig has got a hole on the top of the head here and it sends an infrared signal out of that hole once it's been put into the mode where it's ready to go into the hutch. And if we turn the hutch upside down, we can see on the top of it where the infrared receiver is. So the infrared receiver is in here, just behind where the doors lock. So I managed to get a close up of that infrared receiver. So the receiver bit is, is that circular thing right in the middle isn't it Paul? It is yeah. Oh, it's looking down at the top of the guinea pig's head is it? Yeah. So does that mean you've got to place the guinea pig in the right way around? That's right. I mean it actually says in the instructions that the guinea pig's got to be got to be placed upright in the middle of the hutch or else the process will not work. Mm. So the guinea pig sends out an infrared Mm. message would mm -hmm. be like a number would it um yeah something that the electronics in the hut can identify as the guinea pig yeah and then this receiver picks it up in mm -hmm. the hut and obviously there's a microcontroller in mm -hmm. the hut mm -hmm. and that sets in motion the timer depending on which you select to start the process of them being born. Now you actually manage to pick up the infrared using a security camera, Paul. Yeah, security cameras can see infrared, so if we pointed it at the top of the guinea pig's head, we could see the little flashes in infrared. So, you were saying, what's the point? Why, why do we do this? Yeah. Well, it's because if there wasn't a signal sent from the guinea pig to the hutch, 
the kid could just shut the doors and it would start the process and the babies would be born and the, oh, the mother right. isn't even in there. So the hut's got a logic to it then. It will, yeah. only, it will only deliver a baby if mama guinea pig's in the hut, mm -hmm. if she's been put in the right mood by stroking her. Yeah. And if the doors are shut on the hutch, is that true? Yes. Those, those have got to be shut as well. Yes. So, and only, only when all those conditions are satisfied will the time start to deliver a baby. Yeah. Ah, clever. Pretty smart. Yeah. I've never actually tried closing these doors with the guinea pig not being in, so we would expect nothing would happen. Yeah, nothing happens. The heart doesn't come on. Ah, so the heart when the heart comes on, that indicates that uh, a guinea pig's going to be born. Yes. This must be to switch the hutch on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when the doors are closed. Mm. So that operates the switch to switch it on and then um i suppose the microcontroller is like waiting for a signal from mama guinea pig yeah and if it gets the signal mm -hmm. the light comes on yeah so if you put mama guinea pig in like that now without it, without her being in the mood yeah and i'll put her in the correct place because it okay. asks you to put it in the middle yeah. and that makes sense because that's directly underneath it is yeah the so infrared receiver if we close the doors now the light the still won't, light won't come, come on, on because she's not being no, put in the right hasn't. the right mood yeah because it's not yeah. receiving that infrared right command mm. Fascinating, isn't it? Mm, it's nicely hidden, the technology, to provide it is, that yeah, uh, functionality, yeah. isn't it? Mm. And I mean, if I was a kid, I, I know the way I was when I was a kid, I would have put the guinea pig in and shut the doors and not put it in that, in that the, mood. In the right mood to have a baby. Yeah. And I I would have been, like, really surprised that the light didn't come on. <laughs> like, oh, wow, how, how, how? How does how it does all that, know? How does it know? Mm. Yeah. So I've put the hutch on fast mode and the first two guinea pigs came out bang on time. First one after 10 minutes, second one 30 minutes later and the last one's due to come out in half an hour's time which will be quarter past three. So I must have reloaded it correctly because um, the first two have come out okay and I'm sure the last one will. Okay, so that took me by surprise. The last one has been released uh, after just 15 minutes. Now, I did um, open the top of the hutch and unlock it at one point because we were looking for this uh, celery to feed the guinea pig with. Be warned folks, this is very easily lost. It had actually fallen down the side of the sofa, right at the bottom. So I opened the top of the hutch to see if it was in there and I don't know if that's disturbed the timer function because that was only actually 15 minutes and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be 30 minutes. But it has been released okay. This is the only one that's landed on its feet. So obviously I did load the mechanism up correctly. So that about wraps it up for this video. The next video on this guinea pig is going to be on troubleshooting. Because, as we were saying, it's quite ingenious and it's quite complicated. A lot of things have been, got to be just right for it to work. So we'll be going over the things that can go wrong and how to avoid them or put them right in the next video. But that's it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching, as always. And see you next time.